let's turn this into these. Hi everyone, I'm Stephanie and welcome back to So Many Things. Today I thought we'd do a little DIY project together of turning this jacket that I picked up at the local thrift store for $12.50 Canadian into an amazing pair of booties. The pattern we're going to use today is a pattern from Somenta. They have an amazing little booty pattern. This is a one piece. Um, I've been using it for years and it truly is amazing. Clients have said that they are the only booties that will stay on their children's feet and I myself wear the adult ones and they are comfortable. I'll have a link for it down in the description below if you're interested in purchasing the pattern. So I've started out this project by cutting out the lining in this jacket and then I kind of took a peek to see where my largest surface area was. So I think I'm going to use one of the sleeves because there's less seams on the sleeves. So job one, cut out the sleeve. turn it inside out that way I'm working with the wrong side of the fabric sometimes it also helps the fabric lay better when it's inside out we should only need one sleeve so I'm gonna put the rest of this aside for now there we go the cuff was pleated on this jacket so it made the leather sit a little funny so I've got it all flattened out now and I went ahead and I've pre-cut all my pattern pieces. So we're just going to take our pattern piece and we're going to find a nice flat spot to lay it out on. And I enjoy using my rotary cutter just because it's a lot easier, I find, than my scissors, especially working with a thick fabric like this. Now working with this sleeve also gave us the opportunity to make two matching pieces. So obviously we need a right foot and a left foot, so cutting them right sides together will give you a matching pair automatically. So you'll need two of the body pieces, you'll need two of the toe piece. We'll also need, because these I'm making a 6 to 12 month, um, I would also like to make the sole in the same fabric just because I think if we use something else um, it'll take away from the effect of the of the boot. So if there's not enough ooh, space on the sleeve you can cut another piece from the jacket but I think once I've opened it up I think I'm gonna have lots of room to get these cut out from this sleeve. So now we have the three pieces that we need for the outer layer. We'll also need an inner lining of some sort and I'm thinking because this suede is so heavy that just a fleece would work great. Um, and then I always do some sort of Sherpa or sheepskin on uh, the inner sole just for that cozy fuzzy feeling on the kid's toes. So I'll grab those and get those cut out for you too. So here we have all our pieces cut out. Our soles, our inner and outer of the top boot, our toe piece, and I want to create a little fringe at the top, so I cut two strips 10 inches by 1 and 3 quarter inches to add to the top of the boot. I'll fringe it at the end, just so that I don't accidentally cut a strip. So, let's start assembling. We're going to want to mark, so on your pattern piece there is a center point at the top and at the bottom. There's also a center point in the middle of the arch of the toe. Um, and as well on your toe piece. So you're going to want to mark all those center points on your inners and outers. For the inner 
fingers when it's a soft fabric all I usually do is just fold it over and mark it with a pin that way when I have the other piece pinned I can just go ahead and match up the pins and then pull my one pin. So you're going to want to make inner and outer separate at this point, pinning the toe piece to the body of the booty. Once you've got that done on all four pieces, sew along the edge with a quarter inch seam allowance. So I've got them both sewn up. We're just going to unpin. I wasn't able to pin the leather, it was just too thick. So I used some of my Wonder Clips and just pinned it along the edge with these and then removed them as I went along. So you should have two pieces, four pieces, pardon me, that look like this. We're going to put the outer pieces aside for now. We have one more step to do on the inner piece. So for it to sit firmly uh, around a child's ankle, we're going to have to insert an elastic in here. So this size calls for a seven and a quarter piece of quarter inch elastic. And on the pattern piece itself, it shows the location of the elastic. So this dotted line across here shows you where the elastic should be and the dots on the side indicate um, where to mark on your fabric for placement. So we're just going to do that really quick. I pin either end because it's such a small booty. Now when I work with adult booties, I'll usually stretch the elastic and pin it in the center just to make sure that I'm not over stretching on one end or the other. So now that you have this pin, you're gonna run it through your sewing machine, pulling your elastic taut as you go through. Now not so much that you're stretching the fleece, just enough to say that it, it matches evenly with a zigzag stitch. So I went ahead and basted the fringe to the top of my foot piece, just because I thought that there would be less movement once we get it all pinned. So you're going to want to take your lining piece and just match up the edges of your front piece, making sure that right sides are together. I always make sure to pin or clip right at the elastic. Sometimes it, it puckers a little bit where the elastic um, attached. So it just makes sure to get that really nice and tight so that you're getting a nice seam along that edge. We are pinned all the way around. Now don't worry about this side, we're going to deal with that side in a moment. So we're going to stitch all the way around this side, the outside, with a quarter inch seam allowance. Alright, so I've stitched all the way around the outside. Now usually I would just trim my corners, but because this leather is so thick, I think I might use my pinking shears and just trim all the way around. Just to give us a little bit of um, less bulky seam once we turn it. These corners probably be a little harder to punch out. I have these, I'm not sure if you can see it, um, they're like a little elastic pullers that you would shove through a casing um, and it's got an awesome tip to it, nice and blunt, that I can use to poke out these corners without 
poking a hole. Okay, so once that's done, just fold your seam over so that it's flush, so that you can top stitch around the outside. You have to make sure that your machine has a good leather needle in it um, along with a little bit thicker thread just to hold the weight of this fabric. So I really take my time at this step um, just to make sure that I've folded it over nicely, that not too much of the lining is showing to the front side. That way when your booty's finished that it, it looks more, more professional. you're going to want to go ahead and top stitch the same seam that you just completed tacking everything together and holding everything together properly on both booties now that you've got your top stitch done around your two booties this is the time when I would start cutting my fringe so I have just used my trusty little sorry it's hard to see um, thread thread puller, elastic puller, um, as a guide of approximately how wide to do my fringe. Now this is all up to you. You can choose a super wide, a super thin, whatever you want. So I'm just eyeballing it, placing it on top of my fringe piece, and then just clipping the bottom so that I know approximately how wide to cut the remaining fringe. So you do this all the way across both um, booties and when it's done you kind of sort of see it's starting to frill a little bit looking kind of cute you'll also want to match up the remaining pieces of your boot so the bottom half that we're going to attach to the sole so let's do that I start by matching up my two side seams and then I start working around the toe. Once I get a couple pins, or in this case clips across the sides, I just play with it, um, pull a little bit on the fleece on the cotton or in this case the leather and make sure that we're kind of lined up all the way around the toe while it's laying flat and then I just clip it around. Our next step is to do the stay stitch which holds our booty in a circle um, and relieves a little bit of pressure on the sole for when you're taking it on and off because there's that tension point at which you're pulling the button um, and that all that tension will go onto the stay stitch and not the seam at the sole. So on the side of the booty that is furthest away from your toe, you're going to want to mark <clears throat> one inch on the top and the bottom. And then we're just going to wrap our booty around and lining up our edge to our mark. So our stay stitch is going to go about here in the, in the center. You'll be able to feel with your fingers on the inside where the elastic is, and that's exactly where you want your stay stitch, right over that elastic. That way it's holding everything nice and secure, and there's no looseness in the elastic to hold the booty around your child's ankle. So head over to your sewing machine, and right over top of your top stitch, place the stay stitch. So just three or four stitches forward, back and forth and then you're good to go. So our stay stitch is in. You can't notice it, but you can because now you can't open it up. I'm just going to leave the top half pinned and we're going to turn these booties inside out for the next step. There we 
we go. Now remember when at the beginning when we marked our center of our toe and the center of our heel? This is when this comes in handy. So we're going to sandwich together our sole pieces. I like to put a, just a really thin layer of a diaper flannel on in between just for an added layer of protection because you know those little ones are going to be on their feet a lot. So anything to cut the cold, especially here in the winter. So we're going to make sure that the right side of our um, leather is facing down and then our Sherpa or our inside fabric is facing up. I'll just loosely pin these just so that they don't slide around. And now it's time to match. So I, my mark has faded a little bit, but it is right here in the center. And I'm going to match that to my center seam on my toe piece. I usually then do just a couple other pins across the toe just to keep it secure and then I'll switch to the heel. This will make sure that you're putting on the sole evenly and that your sole doesn't end up wonky in the end. So I can't see my heel mark anymore. I'm just going to give this a little fold to know where I'm at. Same thing, I will do a couple pins here at the sole. And then I'll start slowly working with one side of the booty, matching heel toe, heel toe until I get to a point where I can just give it a little tug and everything will sit flat. You'll do this to obviously both booties and then you can take it over to your sewing machine. Same with a quarter inch seam allowance. Give it a stitch all the way around. This is where it's going to get tough and your sewing machine may not like you. It is thick. There are many layers. There's five layers here. So uh, make sure you've got a good leather needle on and go slow. The hardest part is done. I found even my machine was having a hard time. So make sure that you've got your best needle and like I said, go really slow. So now you can unclip the top and we're going to trim around the outside with our pinking shears. Again, just to debulk that seam because there is quite a lot of, of fabric. So if you're in need of any of these tools that I've been using today, I will have a link down in the description below to all the tools that I've used or something very close to if I can't happen to find them because some of them I did purchase locally. So take a peek down there if you're needing some new equipment. Now for my absolute favorite part, turning them. So you've worked this whole time creating something that you're like, yeah, I think I like it, I think I like it. And then once you get it turned and you see the final product, it just always seems to blow my mind that they turn out way better than I ever thought that they would. So you just want to give um, your seam around the sole just a roll. So grab it between your fingers and just squish it back and forth and that'll help to flatten it out a little bit and to get it to sit where it's supposed to. The last step on these is to do our button closure. So I'm gonna pull out my buttons and see which ones match. All right, I've got three shades of brown. 
One's like a goldy brown, one's a chocolate brown, and one's a tan. I think I'm going to go with the dark chocolate brown. So you're going to need, depending on your preference, somewhere between four and six buttons. Or snaps, pardon me. I think I'm only going to do one on each booty just because I can hide it underneath the fringe and then you really won't notice it. So I'm going to need two caps, two female sides, and two male sides. So here, um, if you've purchased a, a snap kit through Cam Snaps, you'll receive your handheld snap press and usually an assortment of starter snaps. The kit also comes with a what they call an awl but I was finding that mine was getting a little dull and I was having a hard time going through some of my thicker fabrics so I went to Michael's and purchased one of these in the jewelry section. It's just a, a, a leather punch I guess it would be called. Um, I set it to the one of the medium settings and it seems to work amazing for me right now. So I'm just going to align this where I want my snap. I usually try and go through all the layers at once. If nothing else, I'll get um, at least an indentation on the back side. That way I know that my snap is properly aligned. little booty is done and you can't even see the snap which is awesome. I do also try and get them as close as possible to the same location on both booties especially if you're doing like a double snap um, it does help a lot to have it in the same location. So some of you may have noticed that I keep all my snaps in these little um, art bin containers that have the little dividers in them. That way I'm able to keep all three pieces for each color separate. Which helps, especially for the male and female sides, so that I'm not searching all the time for one side or the other. I hope you enjoyed sewing with me today. Please like this video, subscribe to my channel, and press the bell button to get notification of the next video coming. Thanks for watching.